Hi everyone and welcome to Wait What, where we explore the weird, the wacky and the wonderful here at the Portland Art Museum. Today we're going to be exploring the galleries through a slightly different frame of mind, i.e. the mind, i.e. your brain. So we all know that when you come to the museum it's a little bit different from sitting on your couch and watching movies. It's a new space, there are things that you don't normally see, you're walking around with people and what does that do to your brain? So, to help me out, I have two experts here from Northwest Noggin, a collaborative of scientists and students throughout Portland, Oregon. One of the things that I think is interesting when you're thinking about your responses to art is how there are multiple parallel systems that are simultaneously active, that are perceiving or detecting stimuli, and then responding with behavior, you know, with facial expression changes, postural adjustments, lots of internal changes in terms of like hormones or, you know, adrenaline and, you know, the heart rate, all these things that are happening internally too that you're not, you know, explicitly necessarily aware of, but they influence you know, how you feel and what you do. So you could walk around a room like this yeah. mm -hmm. and just walk up to each individual portrait and sort of feel that and play with that? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And you can, it, it's kind of fun sometimes to figure out like why do you feel that way? If it's in a context like this too, it's actually a safe context to some extent. So I'm having this emotional response to this, why? Like what is it about it? It's a mystery. It's like uh, you're, we're gonna figure out the, you know, the story right. or the pattern and that's quite motivating you know, to try to get engaged at that level, so. But these are happening on a very subconscious level. I mean, yeah. we're not walking in here thinking about that. We just sort of make a snap judgment. Yes, definitely. So there's a very visceral response, and actually, and some of them actually does have to do with your personal history. Like, so other factors, like just the shape of his head, or, you know, the color of his skin, or the cut of his hair, and things like that, may also, you know, based upon your own past experience, you know, provoke certain sorts of emotional responses that are kind of unbidden. You don't have a lot of control. And they're based upon past experiences with people who look like this guy. As things uh, uh, become more abstract, your brain is going to have a harder time figuring out the scene in front of you. You're constantly doing that everywhere, but um, the neat thing about artwork, and especially uh, somebody like Monet, is that they're really um, uh, consciously kind of manipulating those effects. One of the things he's doing in a painting like this is actually you know, stripping away visual cues for depth perception. He's eliminated the horizon line, so there you end up with a much more flat image. We're very wired to continue searching until discovery, until we, we actually fig, kind of figure out what is going on. So we're motivated to do it. One of the first things we're, uh, we do is we try and... Figure it out. Yeah, uh, and, and that includes immediately trying to identify objects within that space. Right. You may think that something is a a plane and you're perfectly happy with that, then when somebody comes along and says, no, look, that's an insect, look at all the legs like, coming off it, it's really hard not to, after that point, return to that insect idea. <laughs> so our brain sort of puzzling this out, looking for things it can recognize, even if yes. we intellectually know that it's completely yeah, abstract. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Right. Huh? Yeah. It's interesting because it feels like that completely validates what we tell people in museums, which is, spend a lot of time with these yeah, abstract yeah. pieces, you know, grab a chair, sit down in front of them for a really long time, you know, and it'll continue to change. You know, it's interesting because yeah. you, once you've discovered a component of this actually too, the next time you come and see it again, it'll be much quicker. You'll, you'll recognize it yes. more rapidly. So you can, you can develop a relationship with a particular work of abstract art, yeah. or you have already, you know, spent time with it and, you know, organized, um, you know, how you respond to it visually right. and emotionally actually. So there you have it, your brain on art, even before you know anything about it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.